Look, the European run was nice, don't get me wrong, but, uh, you know, our main focus is and always has been the league. So, what's that? We didn't want to win the league, we always wanted to finish second. Somebody get him out of here. Hey guys, I'm Ozzy Villain and welcome back to Your Ruin on the Impossible Dream. It is Season 6, Episode 1415 today and we have the Croatian Cup Final. We're going to do both legs, we're going to do something a little bit different, I think. Because the transfer window and the transfer specials tend to be a little bit shorter, is uh, what we'll do is we'll do two legs today, and then we'll have the transfer special, uh, and then we'll have and we'll have the uh, the end of season awards sort of as an intro into that. So uh, we'll probably do gold the season today, but end of season awards next episode. So that is that. Now we do have some potentially big news, and that is in the front uh, in the terms I should say of signings. Of course, we have signed Nemanja Tosic. Now he is cost us three point two million. But he was one of the top players in the, the 50 uh, was it Next Gen Superstars, whatever they called. I think he's going to be really, really good. He's got good positioning already. He's already arguably the best centre-back that we will have. Uh, the, the only small issue I have in spending the money is maybe not the greatest passing. But he's only 18 already, a Serbian international. I think he's going to do really, really well for us. So um, there's, it's difficult. It's difficult to pick too many holes in his game, and he's only going to get better. So, uh, yeah, we went in heavy for him. There was uh, all the all the big European clubs were interested, but we could offer him, you know, like first team star player, you know, and uh, forget the, what the what the salary is, but we'll find that out. I, I'm excited. I think he's going to do really, really well, and a good, a, a good, uh, ambitious personality as well. Now, one other thing we have to catch up on, of course, is the league. Now, we needed, uh, we needed to get into the Champions League. We needed top two. We had Oziak that were five points behind us. There were three games to go, and we went to Oziak. Let's see how we did. We had a half-time lead after Dekic crossed for Skoko, but Oziak pulled level late on. before a counter-attack was finished by Skoko to restore our lead. Only for us to be undone by Route 1 in the 90th minute. Uh, so honestly, I was yelling at Trientus, like not, and I mean like literally yelling, like me yelling, not, not in the game. What was he doing? He just pushed him instead of heading the ball, and it cost us three points. Now, we were the better team in this one. It's not a uh, it's not a terrible result. It kept the gap at five points. Now with two games to go, so that meant if we avoided defeat against Hajduk Split and we were hosting them, that we would be second and in the Champions League. Akbazli gave us a second half lead, and then turned provider for Visenten to make it two 0 before substitutes Ormakic and Matenovic combined for our third. So yeah, this was fairly comfortable in the end. Uh, like I say, we were at home. The XG suggests that they had the better of the chances. I didn't really see it that way, to be honest. But, you know, I mean, the stats don't lie, but we had all the possession. And um, yeah, we did do quite well. We gave a, a, a start to one of our young centre-backs, promising centre-backs. And just generally speaking, did, uh, yeah, just, just did enough, did well. So let's have a look at the league table. So there is still one game to go, but it's effectively sorted that just uh, really it's Rejeka and uh, and Hajduk. I don't even know if there's a difference in what they're playing for, to be honest. Uh, although potentially, potentially Rejeka could beat Oziak yet, couldn't they? Although goal difference will come down to head to head. But that's all beside the point. Dynamo are champions for the second time. We are runners up, so it's good to see us there. And it's been a little bit of a chaotic uh, season, to be honest. You can see on the, the league leaders here, we haven't got anybody up there for the goal of the, the golden boot. Um, we've got a couple of people that have done well in terms of match ratings. But yeah, we've just not really ever clicked in the league. So that's a little bit disappointing. But so uh, essentially job done. Champions League qualifiers are, uh, are back. And let's go and have a look and see what we're doing in the cup final, the first leg. And the first leg is away from home, so we just need to really make sure we're staying in it, don't we? So we're expecting the 4-3-3 out of them, and this is the team that we are sending out, and uh, it is going to be... I'm just looking at heavy match loads here, and that's making me a little bit nervous, so Akbasli can take a rest here. Skoko, 
I mean, he's terrible anyway, so it doesn't really matter if he's on a heavy match late or not. So Ayasa goes in goal. Damjanic and Williams will be the back two. Pambele and Roberts will go down uh, the wings. Sithol, Palumbo and Kakavenga. Kakavenga is wanted by Dinamo, but is not. he's happy to stay now. So that's the, the key difference there. Uh, then Skoko, Fillet and Vizenton. They will be the front three. All right, so we can see the team sheets there. You imagine both teams are putting out their strongest team they can. It's a cup final after all. Uh, so what do we say? There's no pressure on you here. So let's go with that. We did have a team meeting before the game, basically saying, you know, just it's, it's another game. Don't let the pressure get to you. And um, yeah, so let's hope that that is the case. And it makes sense then to, you know, to follow on from the team meeting and say a similar thing in the in the pregame team talk. So, yeah, new signing coming in next year as a centre-back. Um, possibly we're overloaded at centre-backs. So we've got a few yeah, young, promising ones as well. But ultimately, I always say you can never have too many good young players. And Tosic is not a young player. Yeah, I mean, he is. But he's coming in to be uh, first choice with probably Williams, maybe Damianic. Maybe we can look to go back to a back three. Um, that's all problems for next season. Of course, we've got our new left wing back coming in as well. So that's uh, that's exciting. Now, we did get our budgets for next year. Uh, about $6 million in the transfer budget. I forget what the wage budget is, but um, it'll be roughly the same, I would imagine, as Robis. Bit of a heavy touch. And it gets away from him there. Um, the other th bit of news is Akbasli speaks Croatian now. So hopefully that'll help him even more. Um, sort of uh, integrate with the squad and uh, on the field as well. We'll, uh, we'll see. Can Phillip get to that? He can. He's picked it off to Palumbo. Phillip to Byzantin. Byzantin's in. Byzantin scores. And we've taken a first minute lead in the cup final away from home. That is very, very nicely done indeed. And it was uh, Phillip picking off possession here. Back to Palumbo. Palumbo back to Phillip. Phillip first time. That first touch from Byzantin was class. And the second touch, that wasn't bad either, was it? So 1-0. We're on line for a 180 nil. Cup final win over the two legs. Uh, I don't think it's going to quite happen that way, but we'll take uh, just another one, maybe that's a little bit more comfortable, and then uh, we'll take a 2 0 win, won't we? As long as we win. What we don't want to do is end up second in the league. I don't even want to talk about Europe. That was just so disappointing. And um, and then losing a cup final, that would be a. Uh, oh, it's a terrible touch! And oh, Kakavanga! Can't beat the goalkeeper. In truth, it's probably a good save as much as a bad miss as he uh, floats the corner in now to the back post. It's headed away. Palumbo is there. Palumbo for Damjanic. Back to Sithol. Forward for Williams. Can somebody get a centre-back out of the way, please? <laughs> we'll keep praising them. And we've got another corner. Kakavenga again to the back post. Everybody crowds in. It's away. Palumbo picks it up. Palumbo goes back for Williams. To Sithole, to Damjanic, back to Sithole, Palumbo. He's got Pembele on his outside. Pembele's touch is too heavy. And uh, is this highlight going to continue? Out to Rovis we go. Rovis to Kakavenga. Can Kakavenga whip across in now? He's done quite well and loses out. Should pick that up with Sithole. We do. To Palumbo. Palumbo to Pembele. Pembele. Pembele, he's done brilliantly, oh, to the back post, Visenton can't miss, he's 17th of the season, and that is a thing of beauty, it is now 2-0, and Visenton is showing signs that uh, maybe next year, he's going to have, uh, he's going to have a good year in front of goal. I always think it takes, you know, for players that are coming in from a foreign country, that it takes them at least, to, you don't want to judge them too much on their first season, um, because they've got to settle in, they've got to learn the language, all that sort of stuff. But we're definitely seeing signs, and this is what you want to see at the end of the season, that he is he's, he's ready to go for next season. So I'm uh, more than happy to um, to make sure that he is uh, he's going to be the number one man up front for us next season. Uh, in terms of other transfers, it's always a case of just seeing what becomes available. So... That's what we'll. That's essentially what we'll do. There's no one that I necessarily want to sell. There's players that, if we get bids, that I would consider selling. Uh, the one potential problem, actually, that we have is Pembele. Now, we fulfilled the promise to him of making the Champions League, as that is just over the top. The problem is that with all the clubs that are interested in him, and this is something I've noticed more in this version of FM than previous ones, and it's probably more realistic, uh, he doesn't want to negotiate a contract because of the clubs that are interested in him. So it may well come down to uh, Pembele, whose contract is up next season, that we we need to sell him or else we risk losing him for nothing. So that's one that 
might come back this uh, this summer. We'll have to see. For my my ideal scenario is that we keep him. Um, but if he's not going to sign a contract, then I don't want to risk, you know, four million pounds or so is a lot of money for us still. As uh, it's Skoko for Pembele. Pembele is in another good area, and this time it's Phillip. It is 3 0 before half time in the first leg. And, uh, well, at least we're going to, it looks like, take something out of this season. Even not just a hiding in Europe. <laughs> Pembele. He's done brilliantly, hasn't he? And then just back in front of goal. Goalkeeper possibly should be doing a little bit better. But uh, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. We do have one game to go in the league. Uh, for us, that is against Gorica. And it, well, you've seen it. it. It essentially means nothing. What I will be doing in that one is we'll be handing out possibly a lot of uh, a lot of debuts. We've got a lot of young, promising players, not just centre-backs. We've also got some promising midfielders as well. Um, so we'll look to basically give everybody a game we've got some promising strikers as well the likes of Turpich obviously but there's Rakic who's a good young striker um we've got Siraj we've got Brigic who is uh, those two are both sort of breaking into the first team Siraj is uh too young to play in the cup for whatever reason as Rovis and Demjanic look to combine but uh Sithol is another one that's starting to look good uh, as well, the longer the season goes. Pembele's in again here. We are absolutely taunting them down their left-hand side. Pembele to Skoko! And finally! Everybody enjoy me and be disappointed by the song. <laughs> it's I uh, come from the land down under. We've waited months, it feels like. And finally, Skoko has scored. It's 4-0. It's 4-0 in the cup final. Wait, can we just cancel the second leg? This one's done. And uh, it's in their backyard as well, which makes it all the sweeter, doesn't it? Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. We've only had six shots on target. So <laughs> it's not like we're necessarily ripping them to pieces. But down that left-hand side of theirs, uh, between Ruggiero and... I wonder if they're just being too attacking. They looks like they've changed things up a little bit there now. Uh, it, we've, just, we've just been too good for them down there, haven't we? Uh, we do have some players on bookings. Honestly, I don't necessarily care because the second leg is looking a tad like a formality. Uh, Pembele is given everything. Uh, oh, the... All right, hang on. Uh, where are you, Pembele? He's been brilliant. I do have Dekic on the bench. Let's just leave Pembele on. Or do we take him off and save him for the second leg? Let's just leave him on. Palumbo. Let's see what he can do. Could we put five past Dinamo in their own backyard? And it was it who was it? I thought it was Damjanic, but I thought it said Williams down here. Somebody's rattled the crossbar. And um, yeah, unfortunately for us, it was the crossbar, not the back of the net. But uh, yeah, I mean, this, as I said, absolute dreamland stuff. I was fearing that we'd end up a bit of a bridesmaid this year, but no fears about that here. This has been brilliant. And can we go and get another one now? Damjanic, all the way back to Ayasa. Gets it forward for Reese Williams. Pembele, is he going to make a little darting run in behind? I think Williams is waiting for it, but it just never came. Sithole to Williams, to Skoko. Skoko to Pembele. Pembele, it's back in front of goal. It's Phillip. Is he onside? Is the only question. It's his 21st of the season. Um, given the way that uh, the end of season awards is going to be next episode now, I will just mention I, I will leave the, um, the the poll up if you haven't yet voted. Uh, the nominees we had were, what were they? It was Philip Matanovic, Vicenten and, was it Vicenten and, and, no, it was, wasn't Vicenten, it was uh, Robertson and Skoko. So, um, yeah, if you haven't voted yet, you'll get another chance. It wasn't my intention to do it this way, but the two-legged final really does mess up the end of the season because I can't just, uh, you know, finish with a, that being the last game and then the end of season awards as Skoko to fill it, fill it with on a hat trick and the goalkeeper does well. But a nice little set piece from us there as well at, this, at uh, the same time. So football's the winner there. Palumbo to the back post. It's tethered up and it is now away. Sithole brings it down. Just be careful on a booking there, mate, jumping around with your studs out like that. And uh, this is just about done. There it is. 5-0. We've beaten them in their own backyard. And uh, there's still another 90 minutes to go. This could be... Well, let's not say it could be anything. I think we've done enough. So, Visington and uh, Phillip doubles. 
And that is uh, just I mean, four assists. He was brilliant, Pembele, wasn't he? I really do hope we can keep him. I just I fear a little bit that uh, his head's been turned and we may not. Uh, you can see uh, Monaco seems to be his preferred uh, club. So, yeah, that's a shame. Anyway, wait right there. I'll play through the final game of the league season and then we'll uh, hopefully... Could we hit him for 10? That'd be something, wouldn't it? All right, welcome back. Now the uh, Conference League final has been played. Leon beat Anderlecht 1-0. So, uh... Yeah, that makes you wonder if maybe we could have done something like there. But uh, anyway, that's that. There is a few things for the end of the Europa League. Uh, no, was it the Conference League in terms of awards that we've uh, been a part of? The first is that Pembele set a new record for highest average match rating. So well done to him on that. Uh, and the other thing is in the uh, the team of the of the season, Bracalo at left back, which is, uh, I've got to say, surprising. I didn't think he played there that much for us in Europe, but maybe he did. Maybe uh, we had Roberts in the league a, lot, a little bit more. So that was that. You can see the rest of the, the team of the of the tournament there. So uh, well done to us. Semi-final, it's not, semi-finals is fine. Semi-finals is really good. It's the way that we got knocked out, I think, that is uh, makes me just a little bit sick. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go and have a look at how we did against Gorica. It was probably the youngest team we'll ever put out. I don't think anybody was not a teenager, to be honest. So let's go see how we did. Final game of the season, nothing to play for. Go. We fell behind early. And it was 2-0 at halftime before Handler Rovic pulled one back. So on paper, it says it was a 2-1 defeat. We played so, so well. It was uh, really disappointing not to win the game, to be honest. Um, we hit the post, I think, three times. Turpich had one of those days. Uh, but in Siraj as well, sort of the two guys that are in this team, maybe with the except with uh, Brigic as well, you would expect to really be able to to go forward and, and, and carry the side. And they just they just didn't have a good day at all. So, yeah, I mean, the goalkeeper was uh, was a debutante. This guy was a debutante. Uh, we've seen this guy once or twice. But Borchman at left back was an experiment. Novak is a, it was a debutante. Uh, and uh, Rukovina up front was a debutante as well. So really, really happy with how we did, I've got to say. Really, really happy. And so the final league table, that is how it looks. And I can tell you that Orient is playing Slavin Belupo in the uh, in the playoff. And Orient won the first leg at their place, 1-0. I think it was just the first leg. Yeah, it was just the first leg. So, yeah, that is that. So let's go win a cup final. It is obviously the second leg. We're expecting a 4-3-3 out of them. And this is the team that we're sending out. Now, what I'm trying to avoid here is uh, players that are on bookings that are sort of first team or first choices. So the likes of Dem Yenich, who actually may not be first choice next year because we've got that new guy coming out. So or coming in. So let's stick uh, let's stick him in there. That's fine. Uh, so Dekic is another one. Santiago or Santiago could get suspended. Doesn't really matter. Uh, Bosniak is back, but again, a booking away. Kakavengas a booking away as well. So uh, I don't want a suspension early next season. Let's be honest. We're not losing. Oh, I shouldn't say that, but I'd be surprised if we lost uh, by six here. So it's Ayesa in goal. Damjanic and Williams. Pambele. Roberts down the wings. Sithole, Palumbo and uh, Olmarkic. Might switch those two around. Uh, then we've got Skoko, Akbarsli and Vizenton as the front two. All right, so we can see the team sheets. I mean, neither team has anything else going on this season, so you'd imagine that, uh, you know, they'll put out a good team. We cannot allow complacency, I think. I think we've got to go with that, don't we? Damn, Yannick is looking anxious now. I mean, just just don't think that it's one, even though it's one. Uh, no, uh, no tunnel interview either. I'm surprised anybody showed up. So uh, hosting the second leg, uh, you, uh, it's one of those. You'd think there'd be uh, an incentive to have the second leg at, uh, at Dynamo's home ground with the bigger capacity, but I guess um, maybe they knew there wasn't going to be much happening in the second leg. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, get the big crowd in and you'll probably sell out our 5,000 little stadium anyway. So here we go. We are 90 minutes away. We just don't need to concede five. Surely not. Uh, the I mean, the first game was so comprehensive. You'd be looking at us to, you know, looking to score another five rather than concede them, but you just never know, do you? Come on, boys. Um, there was something else I was going to say there as well, but it's gone. There's Pembele reading it like a book. Could be the last time we see him. Uh, you will notice, or you should have noticed, or you may not have. As Oh, it's a wonderful effort from Palumbo, his 11th of the season. Now, in truth, we'll get a better look at it from behind the goal. I think the goalkeeper probably should have done a lot better with this. Is it a late contender for goal of the season? It's not the greatest defensive header away. All Markic... He's taken it very early. 
which maybe catches the goalkeeper out, but I think he should have saved that, if I'm completely honest. But a great strike from Palumbo, and it is now 6 0, which is uh, which is exciting. Can we go uh, and keep adding to this? Pembele forward for Akbazli. Can he keep it in? He can. Oh, and Visenton, in truth, I don't think knew a great deal about it. Oh, but it's offside. Akbazli, I'm assuming, was offside. Yeah. So that's a. Uh, oh, well, that would have been nice, wouldn't it? 2 0 up on the night inside five minutes. But uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so we will do goal of the season at the end of uh, at the end of this game. So make sure that you uh, stick around for that. And then uh, the plan is next episode, end of season awards, and uh, the transfer special. So um, yeah, it, that should be. Uh, it should hopefully. Yeah, this way we get to see both legs of the final. Although there's not that much going on in this one. Can Williams get across? No, he can't. And they've pulled one back. So it is one one on the night, six one on aggregate. And uh, Palumbo, maybe not the greatest pass, and maybe Sitholt played him into a little bit of trouble as well. And uh, yeah, William Ayasa went down a bit too early, perhaps, as well. But yeah, in terms of uh, the transfer special, hopefully having the, the, the end of season awards with that, given how short the uh, the off-season is here in Croatia, um, hopefully it'll it'll pad out the episode length a little bit better. And two legs of the final is always better than one, isn't it? So, well, it would have been if it had been a tight, uh, close final. But yeah, Predic is on the bench. He is definitely leaving. His contract is up. We're not. I think I've already said I'm releasing him, so I didn't get uh, what's the word tempted to uh, to keep him. So that will sadly be the last of the originals to leave, uh, which is always a sad moment in the in an impossible dream. I think it was, of course, Sayas. I think wasn't it at Grindavik that defensive midfielder who was uh, very very good for us. But it seems usually around the sixth season mark, isn't it? Unless there's somebody that's a little bit special. Um, yeah, it's it's usually around this time that uh, the final original departs. And that is just over from Dem Janic, I think it was. So I think what we'll do at halftime, Vizentas are having a good game anyway. We'll bring Pranjic on, give him as much chance as possible to get himself a farewell goal. One last goal in a Jurun shirt. I'm assuming somebody will pick him up. I imagine it'll probably be a second tier side, but I mean, he got us promoted with goals from the second tier and he's, he's not that much. He's only, he's only what, 27, 28? What did I just say? 28. Still well and truly in his prime. So there's no reason why he couldn't, uh, couldn't go down there and do a job for somebody. So we will say, uh, I think just don't get complacent. We'll go and make that sub. Vicenten's just had a bit of a bad day, but that's fine. It gives Prandic a chance and let's hope, let's hope that Prandic can sign off with another goal. Uh, Skoko and Sithole not having great days either. Uh, neither is Pembele, actually, but uh, we'll go with that. That's fine. Here's Prejic down to Akbazli, who hits the post. Well, a farewell assist well, doesn't have quite the same uh, ring to it anyway, does it? But, I mean, even I mean, even in this, in this game, we're, we're not doing too badly against them considering there's you know we haven't put out necessarily our strongest team and uh i mean the thing is neither team really has imagine this would be such a hollow game wouldn't it because <laughs> it's you run it's one of these where it's just like well we can only really massively stuff it up and dynamo goes there thinking well it's not we're not gonna win are we <laughs> so it would just oh. Well, the bright side to that is perhaps he will leave us in the off-season and he'll be suspended somewhere else. But uh, that's not great, is it? So, uh, well, now we can say the 10 men of Jeroen have beaten Dynamo in the uh, Croatian Cup final. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that was all a little bit silly, really, wasn't it? Palumbo snapping into tackles now. We just need to be a little bit sensible here, guys. So it's 2-1 on the night, 6-2 on aggregate. I think it's fine. But uh, you do worry a little bit. As uh, Sithole did okay, just couldn't quite get a meaningful tackle in, could he? And are we going to live to regret bringing Pranjic on as a, as a uh, vanity sub? Um... Yeah, I mean, they are dominating the second half. The thing is, I mean, they, they 
they kind of can dominate it. That's fine. It's, uh, it's, oh, it's away and away. I wonder actually if what we might need to do now is, uh, is maybe just be a little bit more sensible in the way we go about things. We are a man down after all, so we should probably, you know, play a little bit more sensibly. Uh, sit hold, not having the greatest day. I wonder if we take him off or Rovers. Do we have, is Brocalo on the bench? Yes, he is. Okay, so let's bring Brocalo on. Uh, that could be the last we see of Rovis. Uh, Bracalo has a new contract. We have the new left back coming in. Um, oh, Bracalo, what are you doing, man? Somehow we've got away with that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if that is the last we see of him, he has been, needless to say, an absolutely stunning player for us. But uh, it comes that time comes to everybody where it's time to move on, and it might be coming to him. Though for Carlo, I mean, between the red card against Anderlecht and I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. You do worry about him at times. <laughs> but there we go. We've lost on the night, which isn't great. But uh, in truth, that was done and dusted after the five nil at Dinamo's home ground. And, uh, yeah, we can celebrate our second Croatian Cup, which is very nice. It's not like the, the club has a massive history of winning trophies. Two leagues and two cups now. And, uh, yeah, back in the Champions League for next season. It could have been better. I think a European final would have would have capped it off nicely. If we'd won the cup, second in the league, even if we'd lost the final, to say we'd been there would have been nice. But, yeah, well done, boys. Well done. So that's how you handle a two-leg tie. Very well done. Smash him in the first one, take the second leg off. That's how you do it. So first leg triumph helps Jeroen pass Dinamo. That's all good. Prancic uh, has a bruised ankle. That's fine. He'll be uh, able to, to walk out of the building. And uh, so we build on the legacy. Uh, we are praised by the supporters. Well done to me. Uh, we're happy with the cup win. There's the cup review. And uh, I think that is just about that. How much do we have to pay out? So a little bit of money for winning it as well. Uh, finances, though, they're, 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 they're fine. 15 million in the bank, 6 million to spend next episode. And wages, uh, about 30 grand a week to spend as well. So that is that. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, make sure you hit thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. We are Croatian Cup champions back in the Champions League. And, uh, of course, transfer special next episode. And let's uh, sign her off with goals of the season. Don't forget, that there'll be a link down the bottom of the description. So you can go and vote for who you want with that. And there'll actually be two links, won't there? Because um, you'll be able to vote, if you haven't yet, for Viewers Player of the Year as well. See ya. And here are our top four goals from the 28-29 season. Don't forget to vote for your favourite. <laughs>